where they primarily went wrong was in a misconception of uh, the relationship of mass and weight. You, you know, so how, how do you determine the mass of something? You do it by comparing it to something else, the mass of something else. Well, one of the problems here is that uh, if your, your mechanism of determining mass has been predominantly by comparing it to other masses, uh, you're always getting a relative output, a relative reading. So an analogy of this is kind of like if you had a glass bottle, an empty glass bottle, uh, you go and you weigh that, and it weighs something like a, a couple ounces, uh, you know, relatively small weight. Now you fill that glass bottle up with water. Uh, let, let's say it's a liter. You weigh it again, and now it's like a kilogram, you, you know, a thousand-fold weight, essentially. Uh, so you, you say, oh, this is, this is very massive. Now you put that bottle uh, into uh, a fish tank, a swimming pool, whatever, another body of water, how much does it weigh? It doesn't weigh one kilogram anymore. All, all that you'll register uh, is the weight of the bottle, again, just a couple of ounces. Uh, so dark matter has kind of been like that, that uh, space, the vacuum, has a much higher energy content than what is accepted or, or understood by most scientists. So they're measuring that bottle underwater and not taking into account the water itself. Uh, now, when you take into account the water, in this case, that, the, that this is analogous to the, the mass energy content of the vacuum of space itself, uh, then you can account for quote unquote dark matter. Uh, it's, it's the, the uh, uh, effect of, of mass energy on the geometry and torque of space time 